Wobbuffet, the patient Pokemon. It desperately tries to keep its black tail hidden. It is said to be proof the tail hides a secret. Wobbuffet is one of the strangest Pokemon in the entire game. At first glance, he seems virtually unusable, only capable of learning seven moves. However, upon closer inspection, it can be argued that Wobbuffet is one of, if not the most, perfectly designed Pokemon out there. It's based off a bizarre concept. This Pokemon has no offensive moves at all. Any damage it does is based entirely off the two primary counter-attacking moves, Counter and Mirror Coat. The folks at Game Freak blessed Wobbuffet with the exact stats needed to successfully pull off a sets like this. A mountain of hit points, third highest in the game behind Blissey and Chansey, to ensure it doesn't fall quickly, coupled with terrible defenses to ensure that the opponent is doing as much hit point damage as possible, making it easy to bounce back with a counter move and finish them off. Its attack, special attack, and speed stats are also abysmal, which is perfectly fine since Wobbuffet literally has no use for any of them. If all this is true, and it's designed so well, then why aren't people using it? Well, a couple reasons, actually. Wobbuffet's real power comes from the combination of Encore and Shadow Tag. When it was released in the second generation, Wobbuffet had access to neither of these, and its usability was much lower. In both the third and fourth generation games, Wobbuffet was banished into the Uber tier alongside Mewtwo, Ho-Oh, Kyogre, Giratina, and other hyper-powerful legendary Pokemon because it was so game-breaking. As a result of this, there were very few people who even used Wobbuffet in any sort of competitive manner prior to Black and White. But how did Wobbuffet even get banned to the Uber tier in the first place? Well, a strong component of the Pokemon metagame is the ability to predict your opponents and switch into a different Pokemon to counter the one your opponent is currently using. By definition, Wobbuffet has no reliable counters. The only way to escape from its shadow tag are U-Turn, Volt Switch, which didn't exist prior to the 5th generation, Baton Pass, or by using a Shed Shell. Also, the use of Encore ensures that you can predict your opponent's next move without fail, meaning you can either use the appropriate counter-attack, or if your opponent isn't coming at you directly, switch into an appropriate counter-Pokemon of your own to set up for a potential sweep. So what happened? Why is this bizarrely powerful Pokemon now usable in the standard overused tier again? Well, the short answer is everything around it got much more powerful. New threats like Haxorus, Terrakion, Landorus, and especially Volcarona and Hydreigon threaten that Wobbuffet will get to survive an attack before it faints. Also, in the generation switch, Encore got reworked so that instead of the 4 to 8 times it used to be, it will only force the same move 3 times in a row. These recent shortcomings shouldn't deter you from using the blue blob by any means. It's still a very threatening Pokemon when used properly. So, how exactly are you supposed to use it? Most people have never used Wobbuffet in their life and have no idea how to protect it or use it to its full potential. Sure, it's pretty tough defensively, but it's not virtually invincible like a Blissey or Ferrothorn are. It's best used as a revenge machine. Once your opponent has downed one of your own, Take the opportunity to send out Wobbuffet at full health and stop any momentum he has over you. Don't send it in against high-powered offense, even if it's a neutral attack, because you'll probably lose it before it can do anything. For example, you think your opponent will come at you with a Salamence Outrage next turn. With Wobbuffet in the wings, you're better off letting one of your own fall to it, and now that it's locked into the move, using Wobbuffet to counter it from full health on the next turn. As a rule of thumb against standard neutral attacks from sweepers, Wobbuffet will typically survive one, but will typically not survive two. Wait, one attack? That's it? Why would anyone use this thing? Well, that is true, but again, that's against standard sweepers who focus on hitting hard and hitting fast. Against bulky, or even hybrid bulky Pokemon, Wobbuffet is an absolute terror. Your opponent sending out a Blissey to sponge your special sweeper? Introduce her to your blue friend. Blissey is totally helpless against Wobbuffet. Sure, she's faster and can throw off a Toxic or Thunder Wave, but she risks an Encore, which will allow you an easy setup and sweep. If she does come at you with Seismic Toss or Flamethrower, it's just a matter of time until she falls to Counter or Mirror Coat. Now, if you've used Wobbuffet before, or you have a keen understanding of how Pokemon works, 
you've probably already realized that Wobbuffet really only has enough hit points to take down one or maybe two of your opponent's Pokémon. This is where team support is essential to a successful Wobbuffet. Entry hazards are huge. The little bit of damage goes a long way to having your Wobbuffet take less attacks, but Stealth Rocks are especially key because they break opposing Focus Sashes. Few feelings are worse than Mirror Coating an Infernape's Flamethrower only to have it survive with a single hit point and get another turn at you. Even more important than Entry Hazards is a capable Wish user. If you can get your hands on a Wish Blissey or Chansey, use it. The number of Pokémon that can bring down those two is small enough on its own, but take into account that Wobbuffet resists their one weakness and can trap and finish off your opponent's primary Blissey counter, they make an amazing team. Even if you just have a standard Blissey or Chansey without Wish, I'd strongly recommend using it just because of how well the two play together. Outside of that, there are other capable Wish Passers that can be used to fill other roles in your team. Because of its impressive base hit points, unfortunately, Wobbuffet will never heal off half its HP from these Pokémon, but it will go a long way to keeping Wobbuffet usable. Other Pokémon that really benefit from Wobbuffet are Pokémon that can clean sweep a team after a single turn of setup. Wobbuffet's Encore is arguably its best move, so having Pokémon that can capitalize off that turn can turn any battle into a massacre. Dragon Dance, Shell Smash, Swords Dance, Nasty Plot, or Agility users can really help out your team success. Setups aside, there's one Pokémon that requires special mention and can really mess with your opponents when you have a Wobbuffet on your team. Zoroark hits hard on either side, can use a Nasty Plot set, and most importantly, can bluff as Wobbuffet. Most times, people won't even try switching out when they see Wobbuffet because they already know they can't. Sending out Zoroark disguised as Wobbuffet can turn things around in an instant. Your opponent will probably try a setup or status move fearing a counterattack, only to get set up on or possibly even one-shotted before they can attack because of Zoroark's raw power. Plus, if they do come at him, Zoroark resists the dark and ghost attacks that really hurt Wobbuffet. You will still have to watch out for bug attacks, however. As with all Pokémon, you need to play to its strengths in order to get the most out of it. The risk of using Wobbuffet is actually much higher than with most Pokémon, but the resulting reward can be much higher as well. Learn to keep it safe, and it will gladly return the favor. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for any future videos, leave them in the comments below. If you are interested in participating in our online Pokemon League, click in the link in the description for more information.